Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about Webflow and Webflow icons. Now, as many of you know that Webflow doesn't really have a good support for icons by default. They do not offer you any icons that you can include. They do not allow you to easily go ahead and actually change icons and stuff along those lines. Now, when I say that, a lot of people may be misunderstanding me and saying, hey, you can easily go ahead and actually add icons. You can add let's say images and images can be used as icons, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something like, let's say Framer, where I can go to my icons and I can, let's say, drop a feather icon here. I can choose, obviously, first of all, I can fix the alignment. I can choose the size, like for example, 24 by 24. And then I can go ahead and I can choose the color. I can go ahead, choose the different types of icon. Like this is a built-in icon directly or an icon library directly in Framer, uh, which allows me to go ahead and change icons. But in Webflow, we don't have anything like that. If you go to the plus thing, you have obviously elements, but if you try to search for icon, you're not gonna get anything. So imagine I have a bunch of buttons like these, which are subscribe now buttons, which ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So definitely go ahead and do that. But now if I, let's say, wanted to include this icon in there, how would normal people go ahead and do something like that? Well, some people um, actually would, let's say, export this as an SVG. Once they export this, they're just gonna go ahead and actually drag and drop this particular icon. And they're gonna say, hey, I said, see, it's very easy to go ahead and actually uh, include icons. What are you talking about? Well, that's definitely one way of including icons. Let's talk about some other ways. Let me give some gap in between this, uh, like for example, 24 pixels. And now let's say I actually wanted to have this particular button, um, basically, let's say <clears throat> white and the text needs to be black. So I'm just going to add a class here and I'm going to say is, let's say transparent, uh, or let's say is secondary. Let's do is secondary. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this uh, background because we don't need it. So I'm going to say this is going to be transparent and I'm going to go here on the background, like, sorry, on the border. And I'm going to say this particular border is going to be the blue color that we have. Uh, what is the blue color? Uh, let me actually just create a variable out of it so I can actually just easily reference it. So this is my primary uh, background color. Let's go ahead and actually reference it here on the border. I'm going to say there's going to be a one pixel border and I want this text inside to actually have that border color as well. Now, how do I actually have an image that is that color? Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Webflow's lack of support of native icons. So there are multiple ways to obviously fix this, but I wanted to highlight that adding an image is a horrible way, in my opinion, to actually include icons because then you cannot change the color of the icons. If you want to have icons in different colors, like for example here, in one case, the icon is white, in the other case, the icon is blue, and in one case, it's black. Do you expect me to basically have my whole icons duplicated as images with all of these three colors? Definitely not. That's going to be insane. So obviously, the other way to do this would be <clears throat> to use a code embed instead of this image. So I can go here and I can say I want to use a code embed and I can go to my icon here and I can choose the any particular plugin that basically allows me to copy the SVG code. I'm going to say I want you to go ahead and inherit this. So I'm as you can see, it's going to change the width and the height to 100%. I can also decide to remove the fill attribute and I can say I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. I can go ahead and I can paste it here. Now, as you can see, the icon is here. Let me just go ahead and actually change the sizing. I've basically just given this a width and the height so that, sorry, just a width for now, uh, so that I can obviously limit the size, but I can also reduce it a bit. But now I can just copy this particular icon and I can paste it here and that's it. That's how you go ahead and include an icon that's quite easily um, changeable as well. Like for example, I have, for example, some align UI icons here. I can go to any random icon that I wanna use. Let's say, for example, this <clears throat> cloud sign. I can go here, I can say, I wanna use the same plugin here to basically export this icon and you can use any other plugin as well as I mentioned. Just copy this to clipboard, you go here and you just paste it and that's it. You have the icon updated. Now, obviously I wanna go ahead and actually make sure the height is also the same just to fix some alignment issues. And there you go. I can easily go ahead, copy paste it here as well, no issues. And it's very easy to go ahead and update these icons. Unfortunately deleted the other one. So images are definitely not the way. The other thing that we can obviously do is we can use any of the plugins that are there. Like for example, I can go <clears throat> to my uh, apps 
let's just go ahead and actually open apps we have for example the icon drop app i'm going to launch this particular application here i have a bunch of icons like for example let's use font ion icons or something along those lines let's use ion icons here i can easily go ahead and just include this icon and i can give this particular icon a shape of or a size of let's say button icon as well and i can go ahead and include it here as well and now as you can see these also easily respect uh, the uh, font size and some of the other things so images are definitely not the way this or the code embed way is the next best way however there's another way which can be interesting to some people and that way is to basically just go ahead and actually use uh, the font or some icons directly so i can go ahead and i can say okay this is going to be my <clears throat> button icon font class what this icon font class basically does is it actually sets um, the font family for the icon to the font awesome uh, icons and now i can go to my font awesome like for example icons i can just search for any icon that i want let's say for example i want to search for home icon we have a bunch of home icons let's say i want to use this one i'm just going to click on it i'm going to copy this glyph and i can easily go ahead and change this glyph to be this and it's very easily there i can also go ahead and obviously include it here and as you can see that also respects the font size uh, or and obviously the font color <clears throat> now the better thing about this particular icon is this last way of doing things is i can actually convert my button into a component let me actually just show you uh, show this to you in both places so i'm going to go here i'm going to say that i want to convert this button to a component when i do that obviously i can make sure that this particular text is connected to a property which is going to be my button text obviously i can also go ahead and make sure that this particular glyph is also connected to my um, button to my component but if i go to this particular svg there is no way for me to actually change any of the attributes which are actually generating this particular icon now as you can see i cannot change the path as well or the attributes on the path so this particular type like for example whether it's the code embed whether it's an svg embed which this particular icon is and some of the other icons in the plugin do they cannot be changeable if you convert your button into a component but this one can i can easily go ahead this is as you can see i can have multiple instances i can go here to my sorry font awesome i can say i want to choose let's say light and we can have some light name bulb or something along those lines i can copy it i can easily i'm not even sure why i'm like opening the correct uh, the incorrect thing but i can go here and i can easily go ahead and update this icon and it's very easily updatable directly if you make a component now obviously the benefit of the component is that it's very easy to actually control which icons to display and how to customize them like for example i can have i can go ahead and actually modify this initial button component i can go ahead and include a button component on or a button uh, sorry an icon on the right as well i can control its visibility i can say this is going to be my icon right visibility uh, and obviously we also have to change that <clears throat> Uh, let's go ahead and actually sorry let's go and actually add the visibility here as well and then we can change it so i'm going to change this to icon left and once we are done with this we're going to choose our props i'm going to say we are going to have for example this is going to be icon left glyph and we're also going to go ahead and include another text element which is going to be icon right glyph and now we can obviously go ahead and move it at the top and now we can easily go ahead and actually i have forgot to link this one to the correct glyph so i can change that to i can write glyph so okay uh, i mean I'm, I'm not even sure why i actually went ahead and set this particular value as the default one so i probably have to change that we shouldn't really have that large of a value uh, let's just go here and actually choose the glyph that we have as a default value and as you can see now i can easily go ahead and make sure the i can write is hidden make sure the i can left is hidden only optionally decide which icon i actually want to be visible and then obviously go ahead very easily change the icon to something else like let's say for example to something like this uh, so that's a good thing about this particular approach the other good thing about this particular approach is and i can do a separate video on components but once you actually have components like this you obviously have component variants now so we have let's say we can change this to the primary variant but i'm gonna go ahead and actually just change that to or do this secondary 
So we have secondary here and I'm going to say on this particular secondary variant, I don't even need to add a new class. I can just go here and I can say this particular class is going to be um, basically something like this where the border color is going to be primary. The text color is going to be primary and stuff along those lines. So now if I have this particular button, I can easily go ahead and choose the variant and automatically convert this to base and secondary. This is something you cannot do with either of the solutions. You can do it with an image, obviously. You can do all of this thing, all of this stuff with the image, apart from the glyphs. Obviously, if you're with images, you have to upload different images for each different color style, which obviously defeats the purpose um, in a lot of ways, and it basically increases the amount of work that you have to do. So these are some of the ways that I think are really great when you're creating icons or when you're creating buttons and stuff along those lines. So yeah, do let me know what you think about it, which is the best way you actually go ahead and choose these things and what would you like to see next? That's pretty much it. Take care. Bye.